Greetings, my name is Brian D. Garrity, and I've written a book, Still Waters Run Deep. It's a novel uh, concerning a group of uh, river rats on the upper Mississippi in the 1970s and their uh, misadventures. And I've been asked to read a small portion of that, so without further ado... The morning outside the dining room window was sharp with autumn color. Stacy was sitting at the table behind an empty bowl, spooning fluorescent orange tang granules into a glass full of water. He greeted her with a yawn. It's what the astronauts drink, she commented perkily, bonging a rhythm with the spoon on the glass. Don't believe everything they tell you. It's true. I doubt it. Why not? Stacy can't drink liquids in space. There's no gravity. Why not? Because it just blobs into a ball. He dropped into the chair opposite her and picked sleet from his eyes. And if you touch it, it pops into a million balls. Would get into the computers. Pulling the spoon free, she took a long drink and smiled. They drink it from tubes. Tubes. Yeah, like toothpaste tubes, only with a straw. Well, I suppose that would work. Still doesn't mean they drink Tang. Says on TV, he stood shuffling to the pantry door. That brings me back to don't believe everything they tell you. Hey, Dart? Stace? Could you reach the cereal for me? Sure. He rose, fingered a latch, and, and it sprung free of its magnetic clasp. What do you want? What we got? He eyed the boxes on the top shelf, placed there away from Stacy's grasp. Because of her compulsive tendencies to obsess on a certain cereal, to eat a whole box at one go. Let's see. Pulling the first box, he shook it. We got half a box of honeycombs. Yeah, honeycombs. No, wait, what else? Tipping the tops off, he read off names. Quisp. Um, frosted mini wheats. Nah. Super, super sugar crisp. Um, sugar corn pops. Well, life. Ugh. I hate life. He smiled at the unintended irony. Yeah, so do I. Hold on. Behind the row, he found one snuck back sideways. Hold on. I think Mom's been hiding something. He pulled out an unopened box and held it out to her. Freakies. Yeah, freakies. I agree. He pulled milk from the fridge, a bowl from the cabinet, and a spoon from the drawer, setting a place for himself at the table. Stacy stared at the bright cartoon illustrations on the box with barely concealed excitement. I want the prize! Dart snatched it away from her grasp. Now just wait. I'll make you a deal, okay? If it's Boss Moss, Grumbles, or Snorkeldorf, I get the prize. But if it's Goody, Goody, Gargle, Hamhose, or Cow Mumble, you get it. But I like Snorkeldorf too. All right, I concede Snorkeldorf is yours too. Deal? Deal! She bounced in her seat as he broke the box's seal, tipping it over his bowl. A few meager yellow pellets tinkled in, and suddenly it was overflowing with small, clear capsules containing brightly colored figures. Shocked, he reached a hand inside and pulled out more. The cereal box is almost entirely filled with prizes. Jackpot. Stacy's eyes boggled between her pigtails. Are they? They're all here? The phone rang in the kitchen. He was barely aware of his mother answering it. Jesus. You just said a naughty word. It's not a... Just don't tell Mom, okay? Here, have a ham hose. There was a gasp from the kitchen, and then the mother was standing in the dining room doorway. Beehived hair clasped in purple headscarf, a nervous hand fluttering over the breast of her pink and green flower print dress. Her cheeks were flushed, shock in her eyes. That was Kurt's mother. She said... She looked at the cereal bowl full of prizes and stopped, lowering into a chair, confused. Ma, what is it? Dart was becoming concerned. She looked up at him. Helen said the middle school burnt down. What? Last night, it burnt to the ground. All classes are canceled, indefinitely.